it's, uh, yeah. I mean, it, that may be available already. Mm -hmm. Mug. Local business, local business. May 2014. Because maybe you could even display like membership and Linux gaming and things like that while we're while we're talking. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, have have you can useful. do a screen share. You just have like a full screen oh, slide or something. Yeah. Or, or bring the website up. Links for the <laughs> that, that requires us to be a little more organized. We're getting there. <laughs> well, no. If you want, I can do it. One person, instead of running it off your laptop, I could run it off of mine. Okay. And then you're up there talking. The other person is just controlling okay. the video and the hangout and stuff. And okay. At some point, we're going to have more recording devices than people. <laughs> they really like that. Um, was it Real Genius or something where they they have a tape recorders on the desk? One view. Is anybody here viewing the Google Hangout? Please don't. Because <laughs> we have one viewer. I just wanted to make sure it was an outside viewer. Well, that was something I was wondering about is uh, streaming our meetings to the internet live. Where well, that's what we're doing. Yeah. So that's what they have. How do you get yeah. them to be outside? Yeah. We actually have somebody watching. Uh, our, uh, well, we, it, it got page. announced automatically to Twitter, right? And then it got announced to the Google, if you're a member of Google Plus. Okay. And I shared uh, it. You would get that announcement in your Google Plus page. I shared the links. On Google, Google Plus? On Google Plus, Facebook. Yeah, there's a link. Is that how it got on Twitter? IRC, on Twitter, too. Okay, I did. that's how it got Well, can you ask the person how they found out about us? There's, uh, uh, ask them who it is. I wonder if it's Sharon. <coughs> Maybe Sharon. What? Somebody on the Google Hangout? Yeah. It's actually somebody from well, the Jupiter Broadcasting IRC. He's uh, <laughs> no, it's Ross, R O S S. He actually says Craig looks like uh, uh, Linus in low lighting. <laughs> Where's the blanket? Hello, everyone. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about my favorite operating system called Linux. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that's the right accent, but... It's pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> all right, I'm going to turn it over to Craig now. All right. He looks like he's all set. Yep. Uh, so, hi. My name is Craig Maloney. I'm a happy bookie user. Um, I also do a little bit of gaming on the side. And in 2010, I had a presentation about the state of Linux gaming. gambling. And uh, prior to 2010, I mean, you could pretty much count the number of Linux games on, on your hands. I mean, anything that wasn't in BSD games, uh, that wasn't Tux Racer, that yeah. wasn't uh, any of the Loki games. I mean, it was it was pretty minimal. So Sherman, let's set the Wayback Machine for 2010. <laughs> and this was pretty much, uh, this is someone else's uh, a menu, but uh, you can see there are a few things. I mean, the first Humble Bundle had started, so you got things like Aquaria, Gish, uh, Lugaru, Heroes of New Earth, Nexuiz was a popular one, uh, the Penumbra series, which is really cool, and of course you have to have a net hack up there because why not, and World of Goo. So what <coughs> happened in there? Something happened. Pretty sure it wasn't aliens uh, that happened. <laughs> First thing that happened was of course Humble Bundles, and these are awesome. Humble Bundles are a way for you to get about six to eight games uh, for a pay whatever you want price. Uh, depending on the, the average price, if you pay more than the average, you get uh, you get a whole bunch of stuff. It started in May of 2010. Uh, most of the titles had Linux versions. Uh, there's uh, at that time, all of the stuff had Linux versions on it, and it was no DRM, which is a huge win. They still don't have DRM on most of the, the humble bundles that are out there, except for a few here and there. And it was a huge success, unbelievable success. They had about a million dollars worth of sales. Um, what they learned, Linux users will pay for games. Who knew? Because <laughs> we didn't spend all this money on our OS, we have some money laying around. <coughs> Roughly, uh, for most of the humble bundles I, I have seen, there's about usually anywhere between eight to ten dollars is what Linux users will pay for. A um, couple of them gave like, you know, $1,337, you know, of course. Um, in the first one, Wolfire Games found that Linux users paid around $14 in, uh, in the first Humble Bundle. So that was awesome. So if you want to learn more about the Humble Bundles, uh, first off, you can go to humblebundle.com, uh, or you can check out their Wikipedia page. They have a good history of all the different Humble Bundles that have been out there, <coughs> usually kept up to date. They've now started something called the Daily Humble Bundle, which is 
wallet screechingly horrible for me, uh, but great for them. <laughs> there are some other contributing factors as well. How many of you <coughs> dissed mono back in the day? Raise your hand. Because Microsoft was going to do bad things to us. They were going to patent the living daylights out of everything. They were going to bring down the entire ecosystem. Well, guess what? They didn't. In fact, in all of the Humble Bundles, uh, you can see here, and these are just a sampling of all the Humble Bundles that are out there, Mono has been a contributing factor into actually getting games over to Linux. Because it is cross-platform, <coughs> developers can target the Mono platform and have it run under Windows and Android and a whole bunch of other different things. So that has been a very big factor. Java, not quite so much. Java pretty much fell off of the radar of most developers, except for uh, Google, who's now getting sued because of Java, but we won't go there. So uh, this is a list of those. You can find those over at this gist as well. Another reason, Canonical. As much as we like to break Canonical, uh, they have done huge strides in getting gaming over onto Linux. For starters, you had the software store, which you can purchase games from, uh, which um, you can also, for a limited time, you could download and install the Humble Bundle games that you purchased over on the Ubuntu store. But they did one other thing, and this is huge. This is like, holy crap, tilt the wheels, awesome. huge. And that is called Steam. How many of you have heard of Steam? How many of you are using Steam? How many of you are using Steam under Linux? Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Steam <laughs> was a pretty big, big deal. And Canonical had a, had a uh, part in getting that over there. Valve Software, of course, not really huge fans of Microsoft anymore. They're working on uh, their own platform. Most of the Humble Bundle games uh, are available under Steam. And I'm using Humble Bundle in the sense that, because that's where I buy most of my games, is probably a Humble Bundle. So, I mean, basically about once every few months, I'll, I'll dump some cash in Humble Bundle. Uh, Steam Box is Valve's attempt to try and wrest away control away from Microsoft uh, and create their own console uh, living, uh, device for the living room. If George were here, I'd ask you to ask him, but uh, just go find George Castro and ask him about Steam Box. He also had a presentation at uh, Penguin. Yes. Is Steam Box a distro? It is a distro. It's a hardware uh, specification. And um, there, there's a bunch of things. I don't know a whole lot about it personally. But from what I understand, it's, it's, a, it's a specification. It's a distro. It's a controller. It's just a bundle of awesome. Another thing, too, is SDL has been improving. Uh, SDL is a simple directory <coughs> layer. Uh, it was one of the earliest uh, gaming libraries, if you will, it did multimedia stuff. Uh, it keeps on banging the drum, keeps on progressing, which is awesome. A lot of commercial engines have also been targeting Linux. Uh, Unigen is one that has been around for a while. There's a lot of really cool demos and that they've also ported a game over called Oil Rush which will crush this machine, so I won't show you what that game is, but check it out. Uh, Unity 3D also is targeting Linux. So a lot of it, uh, because the people have realized that Linux is a platform that can be targeted, and because we're vocal bastards, uh, people are starting to, to actually make ports for games in that. Uh, Crytek, I'm not sure if it's out or if it's forthcoming, um, but that's a, a huge engine. And Unreal Engine 4 is also forthcoming. What's interesting about the Unreal Engine 4 is that, from my understanding, Epic Games decided to go to a free-to-play uh, model. You pay a $20 subscription and you get the access to the source code and whatnot. Apparently, people took this as a challenge and ported over Unreal Engine 4 to Linux practically within, if not day, hours, then at least days from their announcement. So there is going to be an Unreal Engine game, <coughs> I'm sure, under Linux. So, Unreal Tournament. So let's show some, some games, if you will. Let me go over to a different desktop here. I'm going to bring up my handy dandy Steam and hope to God that nothing breaks. Because it's a live demo. This guy. Yep. Now, this isn't an actual gaming machine. It's a very uh, underpowered laptop. 
So if things look kind of funky on here, uh, it's because this has got a very underpowered CPU with a very mediocre graphics card running ATI. Um, so bear with me. I think mediocre graphics is a little bit. <laughs> no, it's, it's got decent graphics. You'll be surprised. So here I am in Steam. Which is my lab ready. I have a few pre canned versions. Let me start off with this one. This is called Drox Operative, which is a new ish game. Basically, you, there's several different ways to win these things. Oh, here's something to blow up. 